Hello and welcome to Retnotronic. In this episode, we are going to show you how you can write your first piece of code for PIC32 microcontrollers using Harmony version 3. You will also be introduced to the development board with the PIC32 MZ processor, which will be used in this and a couple of upcoming episodes. The code generated will be used to program the PIC32 MZ 2048 microcontroller on the dev board so we can flash one of the LEDs on board while pressing a switch available on the same dev board. Let's see what we have on this dev board. To do this, I will open the PCB project files of this dev board in LTM Designer supplied to us by Microchip. This brings us to mention about our sponsors, LTM and Octopath. Design, share and manufacture PCBs all in the same space without nothing extra to install or configure. Connect to the platform directly from LTM Designer without changing how you already design electronics. LTM 365 requires no additional licenses and comes included with your subscription plan. Share the real-time state of projects with team members, manufacturers and even customers to review and mark up your designs without ever leaving your design space. LTM 365, where the world designs electronics. Octopart gives you the most up-to-date specifications, data sheets, CAD models, etc. for components right in the design environment so you can focus on your designs. Octopart keeps you one step ahead of supply and production risks with automatic notifications for conditions that influence component availability like low stock levels. Octopart lets you keep the design momentum going through moments where you used to stop to research components. Get real-time components insights as you design with Octopart built into LTM 365. If you haven't downloaded LTM asset, use the link in the description below to download it free and follow along. Alright, I'm going to open the project files given to us by Microchip. So I go to the folder, it, uh, the folder is called PIC32MEZ EF Starter Kit and uh, then I go into CAD resources or CAD source and then click on the PCB project file. For a starters, we are going to look at the processor schematic file. So we click on that and uh, that's the processor. This particular board we have got PIC32MEZ 2048EFH144 processor, not this one here. Here you can see the processor on the PCB itself. Here we can see the processor on our board on the pic 32 mz datasheet. As you can see, the process is EFH. If you go through this line, you will see it doesn't have a crypto engine. When designing pic 32 circuits, it's always good to go through this section of the datasheet. Guidelines for getting started. So it gives you the basic connection requirement. I'm not going to go through everything, but you can actually consult the datasheet and go through the instructions. Specifically, recommended minimum connections are shown here. As you can see, there are nine decoupling capacitors here. These are the basic decoupling capacitance for the processor to work. If you go back to the schematic, you can see those decoupling capacitors around the processor. Every processor needs a clock source to work. This PIC32 MEZ processor works with one of the clock sources shown here. So this is basically the oscillator module or uh, crystal. We need to connect one of those modules to the processor. If you look at the dev board, we have only this configuration to run the a PIC32 uh, processor. There is also a secondary oscillator here, 32.768 kHz oscillator. This is a secondary oscillator or maybe a low power oscillator which is connected to PIC using SCO pin. This oscillator, if uh, populated on the board, is used to run the real-time clock module of the PIC32 processor. This can also be used to run the PIC32 processor in very, very uh, low power. 
J7 is in circuit serial programmer connected to the PIC32 MSI processor. You can see the basic connections for J7 will be the MCLR, PGED, PGEC2. PGED is the data connection, PGEC is the clock connection. Moving on to the second schematic, this is basically the PIC kit on board processor. Uh, this dev board has a PIC kit on board, so you don't need your own PIC kit 3 or PIC kit 4 or ICD3 to program this board. You can and use this pick it on board and uh, program the pick 32 msz on the board apart from that icsp signals as you can see is connected to the pick it on board processor using jumper 2 if you have your own microchip programmer you can actually disconnect the jp2 that will disconnect data and clock connections from this microcontroller and then you can use your own icd4 or, or microchip programmer to program pic32 msz processor apart from that there is also a serial EEPROM which is connected to pic32 msz microcontroller you can program this using spi interface moving on to page number three this is the usb to uart bridge so uh, as you can see these two pins are connected back to your PIC32 MSZ processor, RX and TX. This is virtual USB, so when you transmit, you will be able to connect this board to the PC and receive stuff over USB. Or on this schematic, you have SQI memory, uh, which is also sort of a SPI based memory, but very, very fast since it uses more pins from the microcontroller to read and write data from this uh, device. Also, we got three use LEDs and three buttons three use leds are connected to rh node rh1 rh2 respectively switches are connected to rb12 rb13 rb14 in this episode we are going to concentrate on this getting this work so basically we are going to talk about the gpio you also have a header here a 2.54 mm uh, pit header uh, so if you have a oscilloscope or something like that you can connect that to check your signals in this episode, we are going to use the PIC kit on board to program the microcontroller. So as you can see, this uh, USB connector is connected to this processor. We can actually locate this connector on the PCB board. I have I've got the PCB board open up here. So what I will do, I'll just go here and cross probe. I will hold control and click on this component to cross probe the respective component on the PCB. Here you go. So that's the uh, USB debug connector that we are going to use to program our PIC32 MSZ processor. As I explained earlier, if you have your own microchip programmer, you can remove this jumper here and use the J7 connector to program your uh, PIC32 without using the USB debug connector. Okay, we are going to create our first Harmony 3 project now. To do that, we need to go to file new project and then select 32-bit MP lab harmony 3 here and click next and when you come to this window you can click next this is where you set the name and location for your project for the location I have a folder on my desktop called harmony 3 I'm going to browse to that location it's in my desktop this is where I'm going to save my project and then this is the name of the folder so I'm going to say episode 02 GPIO and once I do that I click next and this is where you set your target device as we are working with PIC32 MSA 2048 EFH144 processor we are going to select the target device from this list here to make it easy we are going to select the device family as PIC32 MZ like so and then scroll down to PIC32 MSA 2048 EFH144 like that and then we click finish so you can see when you come to this stage to open harmony you need to launch it and you come to MPLAB harmony configurator window I'm going to go through some of the components not all of them but down the track when we go through other episodes we will look at each section in detail so we have available components here in this window we have the components available in pic32 mz processor if you expand the peripherals list you can see all the modules available in pic32 mz processor and then we come to active components in active components window you will find the components active for our project for every project by default you would see device family pack and system 
at startup and here you have the project graph this is actually a graphical representation of active component as you can see device family and system which is available on active components is visible on project graph some of the parameters of components available in project graph can be changed to do that you click on that component and then you go to configuration options window where you can change some of the parameters for an example if you want to activate the wdt or watchdog timer for pic 32 mz processor you're going here and you're going to click on this window the popular configuration settings or few settings can be accessed while selecting systems and expand device and project configurations and then here if you expand pick the 2 mz device configurations generate few settings and you will be able to access all the few settings here firstly we need to set up a clock for this pic 32 mz processor to do that we need to go to tools and clock configuration so this is the clock configuration window so what i'm going to do for this episode is to use auto calculate from pic 32 mz data sheet we know that this pic can go up to 252 megahertz when it is operating at 3.6 volts but for this example we are going to set the clock at 200 megahertz so we are going to do that by typing the clock frequency here and click apply this is the primary oscillator at the moment it is set to 24 megahertz as you saw previously our primary oscillator is at 24 megahertz so this clock is correct to get 200 megahertz as a sys clock or system clock pb clock is called the peripheral clock at the moment that clock is set to 100 megahertz that's it we have set our clock to 200 megahertz we are going to close this window now we need to set our inputs and outputs going back to our schematic we are going to use switch 1 to activate led 1 so switch 1 is connected to rb12 and led 1 is connected to rh node we need to make rb12 as an input we also have to make rh node as an output so we are going to do that to configure our gpio we need to go to tools and go to pinch configuration this is where you set your inputs and outputs it is easier to find the pins if you order it by the port name so that is what we are going to do here we are going to select ports and it will get arranged by port name so now we are going to find rb12 here so we scroll down this is rb12 at the moment you can see available here that means this pin has not been assigned to anything so we click on that you can see it can either be an analog input or a gpio so we need gpio we will click on gpio at this stage we are going to name this pin as well so as this is a switch or switch one we are going to name it as switch one and then we check other settings as well this is a switch input so the direction of this input is in and then we also have open drain this has nothing to do with input so we are not going to touch it when you come here the mode is digital we need this to be a digital input for the switch to work so we are going to keep it as digital then we have change notification again we are not going to touch that and we are not going to touch pull down and we are not going to touch fast situate but we need to click on pull up so when you click on that the program will automatically enable the weak pull up resistor connected to that input we need that pull up resistor because if you check the schematic there are no pull up resistors connected to the switch input that's done now we have the task of making rh node as an output because it is connected to a led now look for rh node which is here at the moment it is not assigned to anything we need to make it as a gpio and we are also going to give it a custom name we are going to give it led node and then the direction for that pin will be output so we click on that and it will make the direction as output and here you can see low that means at startup this output will be low so that's what we need it is not an open drain so we are not going to worry about open drain setting it is a digital output so we are going to keep it as digital and we are not going to concern about this setting okay now we have set up our input and output we will close this window and then we are going to generate the code like so so 
we write our code in main.c so this is the while loop which will get called over and over again when the program is running so when writing our code you can go to gpio and plib underscore gpio.h these are the macros for switch one pin and these are the macros for led node for this firmware we need to check the status of switch one so to do that we are going to get switch one underscore get we go back to main and then go if switch one so if the switch is not pressed it will be pulled high by the pull up resistor so if it is high So if the switch is not pressed, the LED is switched off and we can have an else statement. So we need to find two macros to switch off and switch on LED. So we go back to plib underscore gpio.h. So this particular macro will make LED note pin or the RH node pin high. This particular macro here will make the RH node pin low. We will copy LED node underscore set and come back to main and this is where we turn on our LED and we go back to plib underscore gpio dot h again and we copy LED node underscore clear go back to main so this is our code we are going to build the project as you can see it build our project without any errors I'm not going to program this code to our dev board. I'm going to make this code a bit interesting. I am going to flash the LED here when the switch is pressed. To do that, we need a, some sort of a timing mechanism. So we go back to our Harmony 3 configurator. We are going to enable the core timer. So we can find the core timer in available components tab. And if you go to peripherals here, you will find the core timer. So we are going to enable the core timer. Once you insert the core timer to the project, you can generate the code again. And if you come to header files, you can see the core timer here. You can expand the core timer and then go to plib underscore core timer dot h and you can find a couple of functions for us to use. So you can see core timer underscore delay ms. So we are going to get that function. Go back to main loop, put that function here. So what we are going to do is when the switch is pressed, we want our LED to flash every 100 milliseconds. It is important to note that this is blocking function. So we want our LED to flash every 100 milliseconds rather than LED node underscore set we are going to use LED node toggle. So every time when the button press is detected it will toggle the state of the LED. Let's build the code and see whether we have any errors. Good sign we don't have any errors. Now we are going to plug in our development board. It is also important to select your project and go to properties and select a compiler. I got two compiler versions. Uh, I have an old compiler version and the latest compiler version. I'm going to select the latest compiler version and click apply. As I have connected my dev tool, I'm going to click this arrow and I will find the starter kit. So this is the dev board which we have connected to the PC. So we are going to select that dev board and apply and okay. Now we are going to flash this code to our device. You can do that by clicking on this button. So as you can see, it programmed and verified the pick 2 ms successfully. Now we can actually press switch 1 and see whether the LED is flashing. As you can see, while pressing the switch 1, the LED node is flashing. That's it for today's video. In the next video, we will be talking about timers of pick 32 ms microcontrollers and how to configure them using Harmony version 3 to use them in your firmware. Thank you very much for watching.